Κατερίνα Μαλακατέ. A book sell, well, I think she's a lot of things. Uh, she's, <laughs> she, uh, well, in Italy, she manages the literary blog uh, Diavazondas starting from uh, 2009. And uh, she's the creator and administrator of uh, one of the most popular Greek uh, book groups in Facebook with more than 38,000 members. Not she's also an author. 3,000. <laughs> Now it's 43,000. Oh, 43,000, oh, yes. <laughs> We have an update on that. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, so she's also an author. Uh, she just has, uh, has a new book, uh, or the th her third book, actually, uh, out in, uh, just been published. Uh, it's called Dichos Prosopo, for the Greeks, you know, and Faceless, you know, for in, in English, from, uh, from Metechmio, from publisher Metechmio. And uh, since uh, 2013, she's also the co-owner of uh, Book Talks, uh, a, a cafe, an, an independent bookshop uh, that is also a cafe. And uh, I'm sure she has a lot of things to tell us, and uh, we're happy to hear you. Okay. <laughs> Hello, all. Uh, good afternoon. Um, uh, Yeah, everybody said, uh, I think, uh, everything that uh, you needed to know about me. So I will start with the uh, book talks. Um, it is a bookshop and a cafe. And um, when we started it in 2013, we didn't know anything about bookshops and we didn't know anything about, book, uh, about coffee shops. And it was uh, really hard at first, but we tried to do what we could best. And what we could best is read. We were avid readers, that's why we started this place. And starting from that, because Book Talks is really a small place, that's all. If you, what you see is what you get. That's a bookshop only. Uh, we have to select what books we put in and what we present. Uh, we have uh, we are focused on literature we, we, because we're such a small place. We are focused on literature and on literature that uh, we like to read on uh, harder things. Uh, we sell less uh, mass products. Maybe in Greece we like to read uh, a lot of uh, love stories that are made for mass production. We sell that, but uh, we're not focused on that. We're focused on harder books, on translations, and And um, that uh, is that differentiates us from other shops. Um, we connect with people, we recommend books, we read books, I write reviews. Um, uh, what we do is uh, that uh, um, we are here for our customers. We have a book club that I moderate. We have two other book clubs that are hosted in the cafe. Uh, we host uh, book presentations uh, in the cafe, book readings, writing seminars. Um, we keep people connected. And we do that also on Facebook. Uh, our page, our Instagram page, our Facebook page, there are always, there's always content there. We create content. We let people know why this book was published and if they're interested in why to buy it. Um, and we have uh, the group that I've repeated told you about, uh, Diavazodas. Diavazodas means reading, by the way. And uh, this helps a lot because the other people create content. And uh, that brings us even more customers. Now, all this was very nice, but before COVID. Uh, the problem is that COVID came and we were not prepared. We didn't have an ESOP, like uh, most of the independent stores in Greece. And uh, we didn't know how to react to all this. Uh, Facebook and Instagram saved us. Uh, we started receiving many orders from inbox, from mail, from telephone, and we started delivering them. Now, as you know, in Greece, there is only one uh, big book chain, bookstore chain, public. It has about 52 stores. And uh, there is a great big shop in uh, the center of Athens, Politia that has a very nice e-soap and uh, they take much of the um, of the internet sales 
Um, during the lockdown, there was a logistic crisis in Greece. The delivery sale, uh, the, the delivery system failed them. Uh, the car services couldn't deliver. You order a, a book from Politia and it came in um, a month. So we stepped in. We were much more flexible. Uh, we delivered books ourselves uh, by bicycle, by motorcycle, by car, by foot. <laughs> and uh, we changed our car services and, uh, and we found one that was, uh, that was, that hadn't crossed. And uh, we gained customers. It was uh, a very stressful time, but it was also uh, an eye opener. Um, we started then to think that we needed an ESOP and we started an ESOP. We don't have an ESOP yet. Uh, there are a lot of difficulties. I think that in the next month our ESOP will be uh, working. But um, because in Greece we don't have a fixed uh, price for books for more than one and a half years, uh, we have a problem there because in public and in politia they can get discounts from publishers that are huge and sometimes they sell books in the prices that we buy them in in these bookstores and um, if you don't have that personal think with the customer and uh, there is only this shop then then there is a price war and in that price war you cannot really beat those big stores so um, the only hope that I see for this is from an alliance. When indie soaps ally, when they can have um, um, more discounts from publishers and retailers, then we will be able to solve this problem. Now, uh, we didn't have, we're not very great in Greece when it comes to uh, making alliances and discussions and uh, finding ways and solutions. But during the lockdown, there was such a movement. Right now, there are one, uh, 105 members all over Greece. You can see that they are all over Greece, really, even in the borders. And we are trying, we're discussing, we make things happen. Um, I don't think we will be able to have a joint ESOP because that's too great for our, um, for Greeks. But it is nice that we can ally, we can uh, fend for each other. It's the first time that we uh, try to make something happen. And it's really nice. Okay, I think that um, I'll uh, tell you about my ideas, what I will do um, in this lockdown, about uh, how I will try to connect even more with customers uh, in the Q&A section. But uh, I have to tell you this, for me, even during this alliance, the, the best thing that uh, you can do for your shop and we can do for our shops is be different have another opinion, uh, try to uh, leave a mark. Uh, little soap like, uh, like ours should be recognizable, should be book talks in Paleo Falero. You know what you, you will find when you uh, get in there. But once in a while, uh, maybe we can surprise you with a book that you wouldn't find anywhere else. Uh, so I think that was um, what I wanted to say as an introduction. Um, what I want uh, to, um, to emphasize is that if we see the lockdown as an opportunity, if we act fast, I think we can have less losses. I don't think we can have anything less, uh, anything else, just less losses. Thank you, Katerina. Um, I think there is food for thought uh, here and food for discussion. Uh, the first question that I have is uh, that has to do with uh, what happened during the pandemic. Did you use, uh, did you do any commercials, any ad, any Facebook ads? Uh, yes. And uh, uh, did they work? Did you think, did you, I mean, was it uh, successful? Did you, was it profitable? I mean, uh, and if not, why? That's the whole question. Okay. Well, you, why do you think anyway? Um, uh, our posts have a lot of organic reads because of the Facebook group. 
so when you make this post an ad that has already a lot of organic reach, uh, it goes to even more people. Um, I think that we used uh, the Facebook ads wisely. We used them, but we didn't let Facebook use us. And it's important because if you give too much money to Facebook, then you'll get nothing in return. The, uh, the percentage uh, is really small what you gain. Uh, and um, you cannot give Facebook much about the, uh, for ads. But it is useful and it has tools and you can use them. And if you have an ESO, an ESO even more. Now, for this pandemic, I think that I will start using Zoom more. Um, uh, up until now, we stop our presentations, our book presentations. We stop the book lab. Uh, we thought that only if people were present there, it would work. But now it seems that the uh, pandemic is here to stay. For at least one year, we will be on and off. So I think I will start the book lab in a Zoom platform, and I will start book presentations this way um, because uh, people want to know why books are out. There are many, many books that are published in Greece, especially translations, because Greek is Greek to the rest of the world. Uh, and many people do not know why a, a book was published. Why do you publish this book and not the other book? And it's important to let people know what uh, what books have to offer and I think we should communicate we should make everything easier for the buyer mm -hmm. uh, but, but, but I, I'm sure you did see also uh, that uh, as we try to get the most out of this uh, crisis mm -hmm. uh, I think you agree that uh, we did see after the pandemic we did see people returning to the books which yeah. was a big gain, okay, for all of us. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, uh, the backlist worked. Yes. We didn't have many new releases, but mm -hmm. there were many people that uh, hadn't uh, uh, read the plug uh, by me, for example. Yeah. So the, the same sword, <laughs> because yeah. it was... Um, so uh, we, there were many people that came back to reading because during a lockdown you have a more, you have more time. Mm -hmm. And uh, it there is um, uh, some um, um, there is room there there uh, there is a chance there it looks that it's here to stay at least for the time at being least, for time for yes i like think it, for at least for a year we'll be year facing be this one yes, lockdowns so. and then open and then close and then open so how but, do we liquidate that if you know what I mean. I mean, uh, how how do we use that? I mean, as a, I think it's, a, we were always complaining in Greece that people don't read, okay, in general, which is a true, which is a fact, okay, in general, yes. the percentage of, uh, this seems to change, okay, it has not, let's say, um, it has not been, uh, it has not consolidated, but uh, it has to change. How do we liquidate on that, uh, in your opinion? I think uh, by being one of the readers, we have to read, we have to be, uh, we have to build communities. Mm -hmm. That's my opinion. That's what work for book talks. We build communities. We are uh, readers as much as other readers are. And uh, we communicate that. We say that we love books. We say that uh, we read books, we write reviews of books. And uh, that's the only way. The only way is to be one of the readers. And uh, when people feel safe, uh, groups like uh, Yavazo that's are a safe place. Uh, even when uh, the quarrel, it's a safe place. Uh, that's why they feel free to quarrel. And uh, when they, have, uh, they feel that they're in a safe place, they will be buying books more. Because many people don't read because they don't know what to read. They can't find their book. They have read the classics and then, what? As adults, they read nothing. This is the audience that we are, uh, that we want. And people that it, that are attracted to reading, because there are people that do, that are not attracted to reading, that will never come to books. 
And yes, yeah, I also see people that are first coming in the books so that they feel embarrassed of, your, of which book to read, and uh, which is very important. Embarrassment, and you know, how do you try, you know, uh, uh, make embarrassment turn into, you know, uh, to a, a interest for the book and uh, help him with that. That's exactly. And in many ways, and for many years, uh, the people of the book, the authors, the publishers, for, started forming groups, and it was really hard for the reader to penetrate. And it, uh, they didn't, uh, they didn't care for the reader, and it showed. And the readers felt really ashamed to come and ask, "What would you recommend that I read? I watch these movies. I have read these books. What would you recommend?" They felt the same. I think that this is that we have to abolish. No, books are not for a special, uh, very close book club uh, for uh, really hard authors. And it's for everyone because everyone needs a good story. Maybe you won't get tonight a good story from Netflix. Maybe you will get it from a book. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, a question is uh, that: uh, What do you think, in your opinion, it would be something of subst uh, uh, of substantial help that you can get from the state? What would you translate to you? Help from the state? I mean. Okay. First of all, the Greek state does nothing for books, booksellers, or publishers, or so nothing, nothing at all. It doesn't have any kind uh, of political way to help us. So even a small thing would be a good start. First of all, there is no one that cares in the government that cares about books. Uh, no one tries to translate Greek books uh, in, uh, uh, no, uh, in other languages. Uh, no one helps authors um, to be authors. Most authors are not professionals. No one helps bookshops. Uh, they have, uh, we have the fixed book price. For years we didn't have it, but it's only for one and a half year. It's a so-and-so fixed book price. They say that they help us, but they didn't help us. And uh, the publishers, give, they just give huge discounts to the chain, to, to the bookshop chain. So even the smallest thing would be a great thing. There are only individuals that do things for uh, books. Uh, even the book fairs, even the Thessaloniki book fairs, the, it's the la in the last minute they get the funding. Yes. They cannot, you cannot organize something when you have 10 days. You, you cannot can, organize it. You, you have invite yeah. authors, you cannot, yes, it's true. Yeah, yeah. It's really, uh, uh, we have a book fair in five days, and today we learn when our presentations for our, uh, for our books will be. And they want to bring back the bookstores in the Thessaloniki book fair, but how? You'll have to plan. You'll have to plan now for the next book fair. You'll have to plan now for the next year for book soaps. You have to plan now for the next year when the, uh, when, uh, the Frankfurt uh, uh, fair will be on. What you, will you show to the world? When you cannot do that, you cannot help booksellers because booksellers are part of the chain. Booksellers cannot sell books if there is not a decent book production, if there are not editors and publishers that can survive. It's a whole thing. I don't think the state, uh, the state has to start and do very small things. And uh, okay, during the lockdown, it gave these uh, 800 euros now. Um, it's not enough. Catherine said it. Yeah. What can you do with it? 8,000 have 800. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. euros I was ashamed when I, when I was crying about the 8,000 and I heard you got 800. Yeah. But if you know the, you, the loan is 4,000 euros and yeah. okay. it's, it's, it's all, it, the, the thing is politics didn't uh, know the meaning of what, ha what it's been um, an independent um, bookseller or just having oh, an independent seller. shop. Yeah. They don't, in Germany, they, they said, 
oh yeah, but you have an online shop, everything is perfect. And we said, no, because the logistic broke down and okay. you don't gain so much when you have an online shop. So we did everything ourselves. We talked from eight to eight, the, the whole day um, on telephone, on WhatsApp, on, on, on yeah. video. Does it worth it, Katerina? Having cafe in in the okay. book. Okay, we didn't know we didn't know how to run a coffee shop. If we didn't know how to run a bookshop once, we didn't know how to run a coffee shop by hundred. And it was hard at first. It was hard to get the licenses because in Greece the law is very strict about cafes and and it, it took us six months to open the shop because of the coffee shop. It is worth it. It is not making much money. Also, it seems so. Uh, the bookshop makes more money than the cafe. But um, it, uh, it is worth it because in the book, uh, in the coffee shop, you can communicate with people more. Uh, you have space to make the book presentations really nice so that uh, people that are, are in the audience can have a coffee, a wine, a, a something to drink, and it is uh, very nice. You can have seminars and people are happy there because it's a nice cafe. It has a very nice quality coffee. It's a different thing, a coffee shop in a bookstore. It has a very nice quality coffee. It's a, it has a very nice biological wine. It's a different um, philosophy when you open a cough shop in a bookshop. Yes. Uh, so I'd say it's worth it, but it's not worth it when you want to make money. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it is just to support the bookshop. <laughs> yeah. it is, yes, it is. Uh, it's a marketing uh, yeah. thing. Yeah, yes. if it was, uh, or if the cough shop was only that, we would have closed it. <laughs> it doesn't make <laughs> money, enough yeah. money to support itself. <laughs> Atrin, do you have uh, coffee in the bookshop? Or... I will tell you something, a secret when we start the new box shop, <laughs> we'll start with a small coffee bar, <laughs> but it's, it's secret, but... <laughs> Yes. Okay, yes. And, and, from the, and from the same thing like Katarina, just to support the bookshop. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is complimentary, but at the same time, it does create an atmosphere. Yes. And yes. Uh, yes and definitely. Even the smell. Yeah, <laughs> the even the smell, yes. <laughs> and there is something else. We have no writing materials. We don't have papers. We don't yeah. have uh, clippers. Mm -hmm. We don't have these things. So we, we have to support the books with something yeah. else. Yes. If we didn't want to end up uh, um, uh, uh, selling a lot of uh, these things and uh, mm -hmm. and have uh, a lot of paper things in our yep. uh, in, uh, in our shops and focus on uh, on books, so we had to have something else. You have a post office. We don't have post offices in uh, Greece <laughs> in in the bookshops. It's uh, it's for parcels. It's not for um, letters. It's just for ah, parcels. Wow. Okay, it's sorry. not it's it's not like DHL. It's something. Simple. It's called Hermes, <laughs> uh, and okay. um, they they send parcels. Okay. Do they have flea markets? that sell books in low prices or the same price because there's something that is quite common in Greece to have flea markets all over uh, Greece. I mean, in, the, in uh, how many in Athens? I don't know. How many in Thessaloniki? Uh, so there are, uh, I don't know if you understand flea markets, what do we mean? You mean? Yes. Uh, yes, okay. Uh, and they are competitive, of course, uh, to okay. the book. They just sell Sorry. books in the flea markets? Yes. Okay. No, we don't. In, in very low prices. Okay, no, we don't have this. Definitely we have books. flea markets, but um, the books are not a good thing if you want to earn money on flea markets here in Germany. Um, many of the secondhand books are, on, uh, are, are bought online, and that's a big market. Also, you can, on, on Amazon, you can, um, you can um, order books in um, secondhand books and they're uh, on eBay you can order secondhand books and many people buy books online there you see it they don't have the flea market they have their computer at home that's a big problem we have here <laughs> but we don't have the flea market I think that would be also a problem here if we would have this we are not it, it is a problem before. here <laughs> yeah it's a it, and yeah. yeah I can imagine that it used to be even bigger during the, the, the 10 year, and now it's starting to a little bit to, I don't know if you agree, Katerina, it's starting a little bit to not to be that uh, 
that's a huge problem. But it was during the 10 years of the crisis, it was a big problem. Yeah, the free and, market. Uh, yeah, yes, is, yes. Uh, yeah, it yeah. was during the years of the crisis, there was even a shop in uh, the center of Athens that only sold yeah, these kinds of books that were stocked and were really in bad shape, but uh, you could buy for one, two euros a book. Uh, it was a really a problem. Um, problem for the market. Uh... We have a simi similar thing um, when the book um, falling out of the price fixing, mm -hmm. then uh, they are collected and then they were sold um, in the big book chains. So you have books, they are not as old, they are not secondhand, they are just in the bookshop, nobody shops them and then they get back to the to the editor, and then they sell them from a low price in the in the book chains. What do you think was the best marketing tactic or the best uh, practice example that you can give us that you did and helped you to move to the next level, uh, your book show? In pandemic, we started uh, to make um, book presentation in Instagram, and many of them followed us because of this at the Instagram channel. But the most popular thing we did in our bookshop was starting in 2016. Um, because in February, normally in February, outside it's cold and it's rainy and nobody goes outside. And um, I invited our um, clients to do puzzle. Do you know what puzzle is? Yes. Um, I made a big table in my bookshop and I put the puzzle of 2,000 pieces there and I said to the clients, you have one week to put this puzzle together and if you are finished, we'll um, spend 200 euros to an um, organization in, in Germany, in, 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 in Germering. We started with um, the people, the sea, sea rescue people in we have in Germany and last year we did this to the fire workers and um, the people come to the bookshops just for puzzling this puzzle and then they say oh that this book I could buy this book and I could buy this and they come and they speak together and the radio station comes and speak about this and the newspaper comes and it I, I couldn't imagine how many people talked about this thing that's a great idea. <laughs> yeah, I'm so it's I'm so sorry. At the moment, you can't put people together to make together a puzzle. Yes. But in, the, um, in the cafe when yes, we it's, finally when we were finally open. yes, and so many people come um, and and do this puzzle together. Um, older people, people who live alone, and they come and they put put it together. It was a very nice atmosphere also in the bookshop about this, and many people come. Um, within the week and looked, oh, is it, um, are they ready with the puzzle or not? And 2,000 is an amount you can do in one week. Uh, I want to do a 6,000 puzzle, but um, the, the table was too, too little. <laughs> and it, I think it would be too much, but 2,000 is, is a perfect fit for this. And this was one of our greatest marketing thing. To, to get the people in the bookshop. And that's like Katharina say, you put people together in the shop. We also did um, one evening singing Christmas carols in our bookshop, bring people together, singing Christmas carols together. Uh, this was also something the people come to the shop and then they see the books. And that, I think that's one of the most important things to get the people in so that they lose um, the lose the respect, not, not the respect. Um, they see, oh, well, they are normal people. They are people, they are reading and they are clever, but they like you and me. me. And yes. um, reading is not only for the people high level, reading is for everyone. And for this marketing things, um, we get people in the shop to, to, to lose the, the fear of the bookshop. And I think this is very important because often um, books are, the people think reading is just upper class, but it's for everyone. And that's, the, that's the, why you're doing things like this. 
The feedback that we had from the participant is enthusiastic, I must tell you. Great idea. <laughs> yeah, very good <laughs> idea. So, yes, really. <laughs> it was really I nice. want to see puzzling people in Greece <laughs> on Facebook next year. I can do the 2,000 pieces myself in one week. I don't need <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I have to agree to admit that uh, that's what the cafe does for us. Mm -hmm. When you have a coffee shop in the yeah. in the house, that's what it does. Uh, yeah. People come to have a coffee, to have a conversation, and they look at the books. Maybe they haven't bought a book in years, mm -hmm. and yeah. they see that we are people that can that they can talk to. We're not people. We're not snobs. We're not. We're people that uh, smile, that uh, will talk to you, and and they start to warm towards books, and they. Feel Feel that it's for everyone. And when you ask um, about marketing, also very popular was um, changing tables with other shops. Um, I put my books in the window of a shoe seller. They, they she had her shoes, and I put my books inside, and we put some um, papers with. Um, some writing on there, the shops, um, books, and uh, fits every every time. And she put the handbags in our bookshop, and we made a table with um, books and the the handbags around. And um, the people coming buying handbags at our bookshop and buying books at the shoe shop, and um, get um, huh? get um, one moment. I feel you were selling also handbags and they were selling books. Could you do that? We don't, we, in Greece, we, I don't think we can do that. Yes, yeah, because uh, I mean, you, you could do, you could really send handbags. Just, just, it was just one, within a week. One week, we, we uh, I, now it was just a table. It was a small table, and we had six or seven handbags on it, and we had also books on it. And we said, buy a book, here's the perfect handbag. And the people were coming and buy both. The buy the book and the buy the handbag, and um, also in the shoe shop, they buy bought shoes and they also bought books. And then after the week, the the shop um, the shoe trader and I we, we oh, yeah, so put it together. And it was just marketing. The people's no, it's amazing as an idea. I don't know practically if it can happen in terms of tax uh, in Greece. I mean, I uh, think the tax service won't allow, uh, allow it in Greece. Yes, um, that's the only yeah. thing. That's yeah. an idea. Not even for a week. It's a idea, really. Because it's a great idea. It's a great idea. I don't know if practically it can happen, but you okay. can, can see. But you can also show them. We had them also in... Um, in, in a clothes shop, just in the windows, and the people it's see the, 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 the books in the windows, and then they come to other sh our shop and say, oh, I want this book I see um, next to the red jacket, and I said, oh, what kind of book was it? <laughs> yes. So just uh, making books um, um, this, um, that the people see the books in their, in their city, mm -hmm. and then they come to you and want to have it. That's what's the idea. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Crossing books. Yes, it's, it's a good idea, actually. What uh, supermarkets use, mm -hmm. really, <laughs> along with uh, other products, they sell books. Yeah, they do here also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do you choose the books that you have in the bookshop? Because you can't have everything, as Katarina said, or Catherine. How do you choose them? I mean, you are not you are not a chain, so you have to make choices. You have to really be selective. How do you do that? According to what? Your taste, the customer taste, what? Anything else? Okay. Do you start? Yes, you start. Okay, I'll start. Uh, first of all, it's personal taste. And these books will be the books that we will uh, try to present to people, whether through reviews, through live channels, through photos. Through... And then there, there is the choice that we make for our customers. We know our customers. We know that um, maybe we didn't uh, read the crime story, but uh, our customers read many crime stories, so we will bring these two. 
but uh, the truth is, the major thing is that we don't bring in many of the mass production books. We, we, maybe we have one copy and we don't sell it all year and we return it afterwards, but uh, we focus on things that uh, make us feel well, that we like to have there and that's what we will sell if we like it ourselves and we know what it is because many books we don't know what it is and we know then we will sell it mm -hmm. yep that's same here it's the personal taste of we are um six people no eight people working in our bookshop and we we, we um sell what they're reading we also sell things you know it will get a bestseller we have it yes but um books where just the editor says oh this is a perfect book it might it's a bestseller i said i don't know the book um i don't i think don't think the story is very good so i won't sell it or i won't buy it at the first um so it's much personal taste and then you can make a bestseller of a book nobody knows and that's the point yeah, we have made a bestseller of a book that, of a publisher that only has three books right now. It started six months ago, and for us, it's a bestseller in the shop. Scotinonero by Pugliese. Dark Water by Pugliese. Okay, <laughs> okay uh, I will uh, agree with both of you because as a bookseller, it is definitely personal taste. And, uh, but at the same time, you have to have the balance on uh, yeah. what it is. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the most difficult thing, I think. If you have the personal taste, you, are, you, know, you, you know what you want to read, what you want to be in the books. But at the same time, you gotta have, you know, you are a bookseller. You have to satisfy the customer. So you gotta have a, but uh, as very well, you said both of you, it's, you, how do you differentiate from the rest? You differentiate, but yeah. what you present and how do you present it on, the, on the customer? Yes. And what, what we do is we made small um, papers with our personal um, reason why this book is so perfect. And there's also standing the name of the person in the shop who loves this book as much. And then this personal paper is um, in the book in the or book. in the staple of yeah. the book. Yes. So the people see, oh, this is one book with paper. I, have to, I want to have it. Or they see, oh, this people, I, I re read the book, uh, I loved the last time, so sh she said this book is also nice, so the people buy this, these books, and that's why we, re we present the books in our bookshop um, better than bestsellers. Yes. Yeah, and we have selves that uh, they say that this is the preference of Katarino, this is the preference yeah. of Yorgos, and uh, it's personal, that's, uh, that's yeah. a thing. But it's always difficult, even with bigger stores that have metadata and many data from their uh, uh, services online and their services. Uh, uh, I, when I discuss it with other bookshop uh, um, owners, it is always difficult what you choose to bring in the shop and what to, to, to show the people. It is. Well, I'm afraid we have to sum up. Uh, I would like to thank uh, both of you. I think it's been a very interesting uh, discussion.